Greetings, North Central Washington. Welcome to Networked, the show that brings you the brightest minds and inspiring stories from the world of technology, community development, and beyond. I'm your host, Jenny Rojanasatian, the Executive Director of NCW Tech Alliance, and I am so thrilled to have you join us today. On this episode of Networked, we have a very special guest joining us, a true powerhouse who's making a tremendous impact in our community. Rosa Polito, who was born and raised right here in the Valley. Rosa brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to the table. With a background in public relations and a long history of working with nonprofits across the community, she now serves as the executive director for the Wenatchee Downtown Association. At the Downtown Association, Rosa and her dedicated team are on a mission to strengthen and enrich the downtown experience for all. But it's not just a job for her, it's a passion. Today, Rosa is gonna help shed some light on the exciting new initiatives that the Wenatchee Downtown Association is spearheading. We Love Downtown, a campaign close to Rosa's heart, which focuses on fostering a sense of community and highlighting the rich tapestry of local businesses and entrepreneurs that make the downtown Wenatchee so special and thriving. Another fantastic collaboration is their partnership with Night Market on the Avenue. This new vibrant event brings together artists, musicians, food vendors, and transforms the heart of the downtown city into a vibrant nocturnal wonderland. It's a celebration of local cult culture, creativity, and a testament to Rosa's dedication to making Wenatchee an incredible place to live and visit. And of course, we cannot forget Wenatchee First Fridays. This beloved monthly tradition has become a real staple of the downtown core, where people from all walks of life can come together to explore art galleries, enjoy live performances, and experience the unique flavors of local cuisine. It's a true testament to the power of collaborative community engagement. But that's not all. Wenatchee Downtown Association offers a variety of opportunities for individuals and businesses to connect. Don't go too far. I'm really excited to have Rosa on air to talk all about the downtown programs offerings, including their tax credit incentive program. We'll be right back on air on the NCW Life Channel. Welcome to Network TV, where today's guest is Rosa Polito, Executive Director for the Wenatchee Downtown Association. Welcome on air, Rosa. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, well, we were chatting off air. We've, we've <laughs> not had the chance to do this interview before, so I'm super thrilled to kind of yes. get to spend some more time learning about your background and your experience in community building. Um, you're the newly director of the Downtown Association, but you've been in this community for a long time. So I'd yeah. love for our audience to learn a little bit. Tell me a little bit about your background and story. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was born and raised in the Valley, which definitely has its advantages now yeah. that I'm a leader in you know this community. But I've been able to just early on volunteer and have so many different opportunities to work with different organizations and also lead some of these projects and initiatives. So all of that I feel like has kind of just helped me get to where I'm at now and continue to have a passion for it and love what I'm doing because I think that's a huge part of any kind of nonprofit work is that you love what you're doing <laughs> so I think it's actually a requirement yes, otherwise you would quickly yeah you migrate would quickly out yeah, <laughs> yes, I always exactly. say that. Like, you don't go into nonprofit work to get rich or anything right. <laughs> you do it because you love it and right so um, yeah I feel like just because I grew up in the valley and I also you know did grow up impoverished so I got to experience kind of what it was like to have barriers and and not have the resources or necessities that you needed um, and kind of where that would set you back mm -hmm. in life. And so I almost made it my mission to like make sure that that didn't happen to me, but also as I grew up, just kind of help in that process and breaking down those barriers and making sure that there is, you know, equity that's going around for everyone. Um, and yeah, and that kind of is why I feel like I've been able to work for so many strong nonprofits and now, get to lead one, which is really fun. I think that's incredible that you have the personal experience of um, growing up locally and, you know, maybe some of the gaps 
that happened previously and now like have a chance to positively impact them for others. So yeah. uh, kudos to you and a huge testament to oh, like, you. <laughs> you know, a compassionate heart to want to kind of, uh, you know, provide solutions for others. Before you got to the Downtown Association, tell me a little bit about the last nonprofit you were working for. Yeah, so I worked for the Chambers, no secret, okay. <laughs> because it was during COVID, which I feel like the Chamber was really one of like the leaders in helping small business. So before that, I was doing healthcare and outreach in, in that area, which was very different. So when I got to the Chamber, it was... I had a whole different perspective in how like our local economy works, how impactful small businesses are. And almost always we, as nonprofits, ask our small businesses to do so much for us. Mm -hmm. So I just had this different perspective now of how much they struggle, but how much they also give back to the community. So when we were going through all these different COVID phases, it was like, how do we just allow, like help businesses survive this, mm -hmm. you know, like, everything else aside, how do we get the information out as we're going through different phases? And at that time, we also were, you know, standing up the Hispanic Business Council. So now we had a whole new demographic that wasn't familiar with chamber work and trying to tap into that and provide resources to them too. It was a lot, but I think it just kind of helped me in understanding small business in general and how all of that impacts our community. Um, well, thank you for all the work you did at the chamber. Oh, the chamber, I, I, I could be incorrect here, but something like 600 plus businesses are connected yeah. to the Wenatchee Valley Chamber, which is a huge base of businesses. So many of them locally owned. Mm -hmm. and, and you're absolutely right. I think our locally owned businesses are um, the first to say yes mm -hmm. and the first to give as well and help others contribute mm -hmm. um, into the process, which now you're in the downtown corridor, mm -hmm. yeah. which is like exclusively really locally owned yeah. businesses. Yeah. So tell me about um, the new role when you took it on um, and a little bit about that transition. Yeah, so I started in February and actually when I was first applying, I had so many self doubts on whether or not I could do the job and do it well, especially if you know anybody knows Linda, which <laughs> All of one. Linda Hagland. Yes. 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 It's um, really hard to follow after someone like that who's so so passionate and has really deep roots to the community. So I was really nervous, and sometimes I still feel like, oh my gosh, I'm an imposter. Mm -hmm. But um, I think you know, Linda and I still meet regularly, and I got to work with her too when I was at the chamber. I think her and I share the same passions and missions, and at the end of the day, we all want to see small business. Um, succeed and thrive and have a safe downtown that people can have, you know, fun events in and experiences in. So, yeah, I think it's been fun. I started February, so okay. I still feel newish. Yes. Um, but it's hard to looking back and seeing, you know, five months in and I feel like I haven't done anything. So um, I still have so many ideas yeah. and things I want to accomplish. And yeah, I hope I, you know, I'm able to do that while I'm in the position that I'm in. Well, I have full confidence. You Thank seem you. eager to learn and yet humble. And um, coming from my own executive director experience when I first started, there is a, this big imposter syndrome. And it's a big learning curve. That first year, yes, it's it really all about is. the learning process. Yeah. But you're not taking a steep step back your first year. You're actually doing more programs and initiatives at the chamber. So tell me um, a little bit about um, some of the unique challenges and opportunities you've encountered this last few months and things that are ahead. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think um, it's a little bit of a almost culture shift from the chamber to the downtown because mm. the chamber does, you know, represent so many different industries and businesses and like you said, like over 600. So with the downtown, it feels like almost you're under a microscope because yeah. you have a main street that's very visible that you have to keep clean and safe. and. Um, those things people can see, so it's easier for people to have an opinion or, um, you know, just have something to say about it. So I think that's been the most challenging is mm. just knowing that we are very visible and also kind of almost the heart of the like the city. This is where like people go to shop local and know for a fact that their money is going into the local economy. So. Um, I think the part that's just been challenging is because we're so small and tight knit, it's like a family and just like any family, you're going to have different things that you think you should be focusing on um, or just different things that you're passionate about. So being able to rally everyone together and, you know, 
like I said yeah. before, everyone has the same ends that they're trying to get to. So just trying to get everyone on the same page of how we get there is, I think, sometimes challenging, but also a great opportunity because when you have diverse voices and diverse ideas, you're able to create some really awesome programs and solutions that you might have not thought of before. I love that you, that you made that point about family. Yeah, yeah, it really <laughs> and is. And that, right, there are gonna be, there, and there's, while it's a small corridor, there's there's also very different types of businesses. You've got mm-hmm. the retail sector that's gonna be, you know, the in-person retail shopping, mm-hmm. the restaurant sector, the convention center, which yes. is a huge, huge part of the traffic that comes in. And you're really the welcoming face too mm-hmm. of people visiting. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the, you know, for people who may not know, maybe about the PAC and the convention center and how much activity happens down there. Yeah, so there's always shows going on year round and the PAC, you know, they have their own season. Plus they also open their doors to other organizations like the music theater and stage kids. And so there's always events going on, which is amazing to have, but it does bring a lot of traffic. And obviously before you go to a show or even after you wanna eat or get some drinks. And so that does kind of help feed into just who's shopping and eating downtown, um, which is huge. I don't think we would have as much traffic if we didn't have a performing arts center or a convention center. I mean, we see the you know, the impact when we have a convention downtown, how many people are now downtown and that wouldn't happen if the convention center wasn't there. We didn't have that space. I love that area, the yeah. fountain, the little Hadeen Plaza. I think it's so cute. And it's also like the one spot where like bikers can safely like transition onto the trail. And so that whole oh, that's area. That's right. Kind of this, is it first street that comes yes, down yeah. into the water? Yep. Yeah, so that whole area I think is huge and really connects all the pieces um, or all the like the really beautiful things in our valley that people can enjoy. So yeah, I think they definitely impact the downtown in a very positive way. We don't have time to go into it today, but they're actually doing some big renovations next yes, year, which yeah. will make that entire asset and the conventions you know, even better for locals and tourists alike. Um, We have to head out to a commercial break, but when we get back, we're going to dive into some upcoming events and programs that the Downtown Association is running. Don't go too far. We'll be right back on the NCW Life channel. Welcome back to part two of Network TV today. I'm your host, Jenny Rojanasatian, and I've been on air with Rosa Polito, Executive Director of the Downtown Association. Rosa, we dived into your background a little bit about kind of the holistic of downtown, but you have some really robust programs and events happening. So now we want to dive all into that. First, can you talk about what is We Love Downtown? Yeah, so We Love Downtown is a really fun just initiative that we started. We want to make it into a whole program and keep it going, but this is the first year we're kicking it off and just kind of testing it out. But we basically just partnered with seven nonprofits. Um, every month you'll see a different nonprofit downtown, and what they're doing every week is coming down and just cleaning and keeping, I guess, a good eye out for like things that might not be safe and then reporting it back to us so that we can have like just a good, um, I guess, just notations. Kind of like all, front, first yeah, impressions. Yeah, their first impressions. Yeah. And they really keep um, us informed on what's happening downtown. So um, definitely if you see them, you know, downtown, thank them. But they're coming out once a week for a few hours and, you know, volunteering their time to clean up from, you know, 2nd Street all the way down to the Kittitas, uh, you know, train station area. So they are really doing a good job of just making sure that it's spruced up and clean. And the city does a great job. Yeah. They're just adding that extra layer of, you know, just eyes and ears out there. So it's been really awesome. And we've had such a great um, relationship with these nonprofits. So being able to, you know, help each other out has just been so fun and amazing to see. And I love tangible projects, something like, um, where you create something, build something, clean something, you yeah. feel really rewarded at yes, the end. It's something yeah. like, Tan- I did this, yeah. it all looks great, we yeah. informed, so that's that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, 
You also have another event coming up, Night Market on the Avenue. What is Night Market on the Avenue? Yeah, so Night Market on the Avenue, that one is actually put on by Josh, who's the owner of Norwood Wine Bar, um, and his friend Susie, who owns Garden Vintage Shop. So those two, they did such an amazing job in the winter with their Night Market, and it was uh, very well attended, and a lot of people, you know, were asking if it was coming back, and so they wanted to host it this summer, and so um, that's coming up next Saturday. It's going to be at night, so it'll start, you know, 7 o'clock and around 11. Um, but it's one of the reasons that I really wanted to partner with them on, on it is because I really wanted to be able to bring also that same vibrancy that we see during the day, but bring it at night. And so this is a great way to do that and also not interrupt, you know, like business during the day. Right. Um, so this for us is gonna be the first time where we close down the block and we've partnered with them and so we're just excited to see kind of what comes out of it. But we have had a lot of um, interest in the event, so. So you're blocking off from? Uh, Rondo and Palouse. Rondo and Palouse, yeah. nice. That's a nice spread of the downtown right there. Yeah. Who is at Night Market? Is it, um, you know, what can people expect when they walk in? Yeah, so we have a ton of small, like, business owners who ne won't necessarily have, like, their own shop. So this okay. is a great opportunity for them to pop up. Um, all of them are going to be some kind of artists. So whether they make jewelry or clothing or um, actual, like, paintings, um, we'll have a, a whole variety of that, which is really nice. We also have eateries, so we'll have blue skies there, um, some pizza and, like, just uh, different things for people to enjoy um, and live music, of course. And so, and, of course, the wine bar, because it yes. is, you know, yeah. done by Norwood, and it'll be right in front of his store. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. I think it's going to be really fun and something different that we haven't seen or done in downtown yet. And what a great time of night because mm -hmm. it's hot. we're getting into those hot summer weather. So later yeah. in the evening, a little bit cooler, yeah. but well, really enjoyable to be outside. This is not the only art piece that you really kind of support. Another huge initiative is First Fridays. What is what yeah. is Wenatchee First Friday? Yeah, so at Angie First Friday, basically you come downtown on the first Friday of every month and we have some kind of in-store special, promotion, live music or art going on. Um, so it's really an art walk, but also we're able to include our small businesses who can't necessarily host an artist in their shop, but they can do an in-store promotion or um, something like of the sort. So this has been something that, you know, one of our other co-workers, Katie, had really carried for about a, a year to keep it alive. And now the Arts Alliance is a new nonprofit and Visit Wenatchee has stepped in. So now we have a really good trio of partners who are supporting it and uplifting it to almost like that next level. So we've been able to do our relaunch this last month and we created a whole website. Um, we also made it easy for um, businesses to connect with artists. So if you are interested in ho hosting a specific type of artist, you could just enter a keyword on the website and it'll list you know different artists in our area who can do that for you. So um, really fun stuff, cool stuff. And um, I'm just excited that it's now been like relaunched with more support. Because this was a program that existed for many years yes. in the community, but yes. was kind of one of those COVID impact areas, right? Yes. Like people were not gathering in person for those couple of years, so kind of faded back, right? Yeah, yeah. And there was like a previous Arts Alliance that was made up of volunteers. So they really brought the idea originally and um, really kind of launched it in the community. Yeah. And so the downtown really just wanted to keep it going once that kind of that group kind of dissolved um, because it did impact businesses and it was a great way for them to do something. If they weren't able to host a big, big event, they could at least participate in this way. Love that. So yeah. something for everyone yes, on First Friday. Exactly. Art, food, retail, shopping yeah. the works. Exactly. Um, let's move into Main Street Tax Credit Incentive Program. A lengthy word there. What? Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about the tax incentive and what how businesses participate in that to support you. Yeah, so the Main Street Tax Credit Program, uh, MSTCI for short, is uh, one of our biggest funding resources. Um, it's one of the ways that we're able to do the mural and the string lights and bring garbage cans because those things are very expensive. Um, but this is a 
actually very exclusive to our state. So any okay. business uh, or private entity that pays business and occupation tax or public utility tax, you can kind of redirect those tax dollars back into an accredited Main Street organization, which we're mm -hmm. accredited nationally and statewide. So if you are able to do that, then you can um, get a tax credit the following year. So if I'm a business who pledges this year, say I pledge, you know, $1,000 mm -hmm. and I, I don't have to pay it until November, but when I go to do my taxes the following year, I can get a tax credit for that. And because we're a nonprofit, you also get, you know, that in, that tax deductible because yeah. it's a charitable donation. And then it fuels these amazing programs. Yes, that are yeah. Happening. It's almost like too good to be true. <laughs> I've had to like <laughs> educate myself over and over right. again because it does sound. What's the catch? Yeah, yeah what's yeah. the catch? But there really isn't. And it's just unique to our state because we do have so many awesome Main Street organizations statewide who are doing great work just like us. And so um, it's just kind of been a test testimony to what those dollars do and how it helps our local Main Street community. So yeah, it does sound too good to be true, but it, it is. Yeah. Yeah, so. But participate. So if you're a downtown business watching um, in Wenatchee, connect with you, but there's also downtown associations all across the state. Yes. And this obviously has a wide reach. So reach out to support other uh, down street, downtown Main Street associations. <laughs> um, as we kind of wrap up today, Tell me a little bit about community engagement and how you're um, bringing you know, a diverse group of people together, perhaps also how people can get involved. Yeah, so um, anyone can get involved through our committees. We have four committees, which are like the pillars of any main street. It's how we're able to get things done. And so we are always looking for volunteers who are passionate about downtowns and wanna help um, to sit on those different committees. Um, you can read all about them on the website, but they all kind of help with different things. One really helps with like promotions and events. Another will help with like landscape of downtown. So whatever you're really passionate about and you wanna serve, that's one way um, we also have you know the Main Street tax credit yeah. program which if you're not able to physically volunteer for us um, but you do pay B and O tax you know redirecting those I mean why wouldn't you, right. you know? yeah. so redirecting those tax dollars really helps us continue these initiatives and programs mm -hmm. um, but yeah as far as like being able to get more diverse voices and uh, bring awareness on what we're doing a lot of it is relationship based so tr like going out and doing a ton of outreach I really believe in outreach. I, that's why I'm so passionate about nonprofits because you have to meet people where they're at and mm -hmm. truly tell your story and inspire them to want to help. And so, yeah, that's kind of some of the ways that I've been tackling, um, you know, being able to add more diverse voices to the table, but also um, just bringing everyone together that's already, you know, volunteered and given so much time and energy to the organization and bringing fresh voices at the same time. So, well, thank you for yeah. all that you're doing, Rosa. You. Congratulations <laughs> on the you. role. What is your website? It's downtownwenatchee.org. Downtownwenatchee.org. Um, folks, be sure to support our local Wenatchee Downtown Association. Look for their upcoming events and opportunities or one in your neighborhood. Uh, thank you to Rosa for joining me on okay. air, mm -hmm. and we will be here next week on the NCW Life channel.